in the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, we welcome you to the Image of Christ Television, the media arm of Christ Apostolic Church, Vineyard of Comfort, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. We are trusting the Lord to bless you and your household with the in-depth exposition, teaching and preaching of the Word of God and by the devotional prophetic prayer insights coming to you through this channel. For further inquiry and counsel, please call plus 1403-4023094 plus 1403-4027828 plus 1587703289898 or send us an email. Host Ministers, Pastor Tim and Pastor Mrs. Tosi Abi Abiola. Jesus is Lord. Once again, we are grateful for God's faithfulness, bringing us to another evening of learning at his feet. It is my prayer that as we come together again tonight, those of us who are in the sanctuary and those watching us online, that the Lord will be pleased to feed us with the bread of life, the word of God in his purest form. In the mighty name of Jesus. To everyone that is watching us online, this is Berean Academy, the Wednesday Bible teaching of Christ Apostolic Church via of Comfort, Calgary Assembly. Uh, we call it Berean Academy, for we believe that whatever teachings and preachings God is helping us to bring your way, you should be like the Bereans who in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verses 10 and 11, listen earnestly and eagerly to the teaching and preaching of Apostle Paul, and they go back home, examining the scriptures if those things were true. That is to say, they did not believe the teaching and the preaching of Apostle Paul, who like and sinker, but they do their own due diligence of checking the scriptures whether those things were true. The same thing we encourage everyone listening to us that don't believe what we are preaching because we are the one preaching them. Check the word of God to confirm them as the true, authentic, rightly divided word of God. And as you do so, by the help of the Holy Spirit, your faith in Christ will become robust, will become strengthened in the mighty name of Jesus. So tonight, I welcome you once again in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's rise up on our feet as we bless the Lord for a few minutes before we go into the teaching tonight. Heavenly Lord, your name is wonderful, your name is excellent, your name is beautiful. I worship you, Lord, for you are mighty. You've got a war in your hands. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Lord, Your name is wonderful. Your name is excellent. Your name is beautiful. I say I worship you, Lord, for you are my 
de Yom Gadau You've got, you've got, you've got a oh, 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 in your hands. You've got a oh, white wall in your hands. You've got a oh, 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 oh in You've got a war in your hands. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Lord, your name is wonderful. Oh, your name is excellent. Oh, yes, your name is beautiful. Beautiful, we worship you, Lord, for you are mighty. You've got a word in your hands. You've got, you've got, you've got a word in your hands. You've got a Oh, white wall in your eyes, you've got a wall in your eyes, you've got a wall in your eyes. Lord, we acknowledge again that you've got the old white wall in your hands. Even the lives of we, your children, are in your hands. Thank you because our yesterday, today, and tomorrow are in your hands. Thank you for your faithfulness in bringing us together tonight. Lord, as we have come, we open up our spirit. We open up our mind that the bread of life, O oh God, may find entrance in us. In the name of Jesus. Speak to every one of us again this night that your word will be life and not let us. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the church say better, amen. amen. Let's be seated, those of us in the house. Tonight, our teaching is titled Companions of the Faithful. Companion of the Faithful. Put in a simple language, those who are walking with those who are faithful. Those who are befriending those who are faithful. Those who associate themselves with those who are faithful. That's the meaning of companions of the faithful. Now I'm going to begin this teaching by acknowledging one thing that we are living in a generation where loneliness seems to be one of the problems people are facing. Yet that again, we are living in a generation where loneliness seems to be one of the problems, if not one of the top five problems, people are facing. And it's a bit unfortunate that even those who profess to be Christian too, they are not exempted from this problem of loneliness, loneliness, and loneliness. Now, why the claim may be legitimate, I want to quickly say to those of us who profess to be Christians, who profess to be following Christ, that it ought not to be. Yeah, I mean again, the people without Christ may be experiencing suffering and complaining about loneliness. But to those of us who profess Christ and we are trying to follow him, I want to submit to you this evening that it ought not to be. Pastor, why do you say that? Let's begin with Jesus Christ, our Lord himself. 
Gospel of John chapter 16 and verses 31 and 32. Let's begin with Jesus Christ, our Lord himself. Gospel of John 16, 31 to 32. The Bible says, You believe at last, Jesus answered. Yes, verse 32. Now, Jesus was talking here to his disciples. He said, But a time is coming and has come when you will be scattered, each to his own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. <laughs> People of God tonight, I want you to get this clear. I said in the beginning, one of the major complaints of people today is loneliness. And I'm saying that may be a problem to the people who are without Christ. But to those of us who are following Christ, please let me say it again. According to the word of Jesus Christ, when he was deserted by everyone, when he was left alone by everyone, Jesus said he was not alone. Please hear that very well. When everybody has left him alone, Jesus said, I am not alone. And he gave us the simple reason why. What was the reason he gave? Can you give it to us again? Let them see. What was the reason? For my father is with me. Hallelujah. You see, please, let's get it right. We might not have gotten to this level yet. But let me tell you the truth. This is a level of basic Christianity. It's not an advanced level that we can cultivate the presence of God to fight and to defeat loneliness in our lives. Now, what am I going to say here is this. If anyone calls himself a Christian, a child of God, and is suffering from loneliness, let that person know that loneliness is not the problem, but is distance from God. Or the absence of God. Or is all our own lack of consciousness that God is with him. Are you following now? Now, to those who, are, who do not profess Christ, they, their loneliness can continue to be, and they may continue to look for psychological help, counselors here and there. Now, why am I saying this? If Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, said, when he was left alone by all human beings, that he was not alone on the basis that his father was with him. I want you to know that we too, we have that eternal promise by God that I will be with you. And that was what cured or defeated loneliness in the life of Jesus Christ, the presence of the father. That's why those of us who have listened to me, when I, when I bring some hymns, there's one of our hymns we used to sing, keep close to Jesus, keep close to Jesus, keep close to Jesus all the way. Because it is an antidote to loneliness. If not, we are going to be like others. Hallelujah. So that was in the life of Jesus Christ. Now let's look at it in the life of Apostle Paul. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, 16 to 17. 2 Timothy 4, 16 to 17. Let's see what Apostle Paul said about his own companionship. Now, Apostle Paul said, At my first defense, no one came to my support, <laughs> but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. Can you learn another virtue there? No, let's go back to that verse 16. When he was deserted by everyone, you know one thing? Apostle Paul was not picking offense for that. Do you hear that? He was not being offended when he was being deserted by men. And that's why at times when I tell you that when you are given to offense, it is not the people that are offending you the problem. You are the one to check yourself. Because look at men like this that we are following. He said, at my first defense, that is, when he was taken to court, 
for the sake of the gospel, you should ask yourself the question, where are all the people he was praying for? Where are all the people that his mantle was healing them and delivering them? Where are all them? Everybody has gone to your tent, O Israel. He said, the, everyone deserted me. And he said, may it not be held against them. That is, he was not offended even by that attitude of the people that he ministered to. But that's not where we are going. Look at where we are going in verse 17. He said, but the Lord stood at my side and gave what? And gave me strength. Now, when everyone has deserted him, he was not lonely. How and why? He said, the Lord was at my side. You understand now? So, which means, while everybody deserted him, he ought to have become lonely. But because of the presence of the Lord on his side, he was strengthened. He was not lonely. You see the difference? Because of the presence of the Lord on his side, he was strengthened, not that he was lonely. Now, why am I saying this as a foundation for this teaching? We are talking about companions of the faithful. And I'm trying to let us see that in the journey of the Christian faith, while one of the problems in the world, and even in the church today, is about loneliness, loneliness, I'm saying it ought not to be. Because it was not like that unto Christ, and it was not like that unto Apostle Paul. So that is to say, we have a kind of example to follow. May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. So while we are talking about the companions of the faithful, those who associate, those who walk along, those who identify with the faithful people, I want you to know that people like Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Apostle Paul, they have demonstrated to us that even when we are deserted by everyone, with the presence of the Lord, we can defeat loneliness. Now, let me say to those of us in the church here now, that in your journey, if you profess to be Christian, and there is loneliness, loneliness is not the problem. What you should know is the problem is that the Lord is not with me. If you can come to that acknowledgement and realization and honesty, I tell you the truth, while you are now trying to pursue the closeness of God, your loneliness will disappear. But if you think that the problem is loneliness like people who are in the world, you will want to be looking for physical method to address it. Instead of you to know that, oh, it is God that is absent in this place. May the Lord give us understanding. So when we are talking now about the companion of the faithful, I want us to look at the text where I took the subject from. Psalm 119, that is where the subject is taken from. Psalm 119 and verse 63. The companions of the faithful. Psalm 119 and verse 63. That is where the topic is taken from. Now, people of God, look at the scripture here. He says, I am a friend to all who do what? Who fear you. To all who follow your precepts. Companions of the faithful. Now, the writer of this psalm is saying one thing. He said, everybody know one thing. I am a friend to all who fear God. I am a friend. I follow those who follow the footsteps of the Lord. The word precept there means the principle, the teaching, the doctrines of God. Now, we are talking about companions of the faithful. Anyone that fears God is a faithful person. He is faithful. Are you listening to me now? Anyone that fears God is faithful. If you don't know any, at least you know the popular story of Joseph. Joseph said, I fear God. And you can see his faithfulness. When he was tempted with immorality on the platter of God, he rejected it. That is faithfulness. But that faithfulness was born out of his fear 
for God. In Genesis 39, verses 9 and 10, he said, How can I do this thing and sin against God? So he was afraid of God. And that was why he was faithful to his master by not betraying him, even when the wife of the master was playing foolishly. You, you get that now? Now, but this psalmist was now saying that, Me, oh, I am a friend to people like that. I am a companion of people like that. I am an associate. That is, I associate myself with people like that. We are talking about companions of the faithful. Now, the first question that should be going on in your heart or that I will throw at you is that who are you associating with? Or who are your own associates? Or put in a more direct language, who are those that are in your own company? That's the meaning of companions. Now, the Bible is not ambiguous. The psalmist here says, I am a friend to those who fear God. Now, let me tell you something here, which is the sincere truth here. He's not saying that he himself fear God. Yeah, this he's not saying that he himself does what fear God, but he's saying that. But I am a friend to those who do what who fears God. You know, the reason why he's a friend to those who fear God is because he too wants that fear of God to rub on him. Oh, glory to God! Listen to this very carefully. He is not saying that he himself fear God, but he said, I am a companion. I am an associate. I am in friendship with those who fear God. So that that fear of God that they have can rob on me. Because take it or you leave it. Anyone that you are in companionship with, his virtue and value will rob on you. Oh my God. Anyone that you are associating with, either directly or indirectly, Maybe through his books, through his write-ups, through his preaching or teaching like you are listening to me now. Anyone that you are associating with, anyone that you are in companionship with, take it or you leave it. His virtue and his value, and if possible, his vices will rob on you. So that was why this psalmist was saying that, I am a friend to those who fear God. Hopefully, that virtue of the fear of God that they have will eventually do what? Rob on me. Companions of the faithful. Put it the other way around. If he was in friendship with those who do not fear God, it's a matter of time. That vice of not fearing God will also rob on him. And that's the essence of this teaching companion of the faithful associate we are not saying you yourself you are faithful but who are you associating and in company of and in company with now let's go back to that psalm 11 verse 63 and i begin to break it down he said i am a friend to anyone who does what who fears god i love this translation again Anyone means anyone, whether the person is male or female, whether the person is literate or illiterate. He said, when I see anyone that, is, that fears God, I love to be in his company. I love to be around people like that. I love to be associated with them. Oh my God. Now, listen to this very carefully. I know we are in living in a generation everybody wants to associate with successful people. <laughs> Whether you make the money by crooked means. See me also with Senator so, 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 and so. Take picture with that. <laughs> yeah, only, no, that, that is for the people of the world. Mm, your photo with the president of any nation does not actually say anything about you positively, if I will help you. 
Because in the, in the kingdom, he said, I am a friend only to those who do what? Who fears God. I'm not a friend to anyone that there is no God in his calculation and permutations. Not to talk of saying, let me have a picture with him so that people can know that me too, I am already going higher. No. Christianity is deeper than that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Many years ago, I was listening to one of my fathers in the Lord. And he said, he's a very big man of God. And I mean very big man of God. Uh, he said, anytime he visits some of his colleagues who are also in that big council, and he gets into their office, and he sees their picture with president of nations, the president of these, he used to ask himself, I don't think John the Baptist we have will be in the same picture with Herod. <laughs> I thank God you're here now. He says, since that day, God delivered him completely from such kind of pictures and hanging in, in his office. Now, what, 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 what success is it? What glory is it? That John the Baptist and Herod, it is impossible. Likewise, many of those leaders that we pose with, <laughs> I'm not talking of those of us in your places of work and career. I'm talking of a Christian faith now. They are of necessarily of no, of no glory to us. But don't let me digress too much. But look, at he said, I am a friend, an associate, a companion. Somebody that I want to identify with anyone who fears God. Now, and when we are talking about fear of God, it is not something complicated. Go back to it. He gave us the meaning. That translation you gave us, look at this. Anyone who does what? Who obeys your commandment. That is the fear of God. You don't need a dictionary meaning. To fear God means to obey what? His commands. Do you understand now? To fear God is not a, something complicated. It is simply to obey His what? His command. That is a practical day-to-day -day living meaning of the fear of God that you obey what he commands. And that's what Jesus himself said. Jesus said, if you love me, if you fear me, if you respect me, obey my teaching. Let's look at that. John chapter 14 and verse 23. <clears throat> Let's look at it. John 14 and 23. Just to let us have an understanding he says, Jesus replied, Jesus, <laughs> I love this way we are learning here. Jesus replied, all, how many? How many? Jesus is not saying those who are mature, those who are not mature. We are the ones doing all that for ourselves. Jesus was not saying the leaders or the members. He said, all who love me. We do what? We do what I say. Jesus was not discriminating that, oh, oh, the leaders, the followers, those, who, mm -mm. all who love me, there will be one thing that will be common to them. Are you following now? Whether they are black or they are white, whether they are educated or they are illiterate, whether they are rich or they are poor, all those ones are irrelevant. Whether they are gifted or they are not gifted, all those ones are irrelevant. All who loves me, one thing will be common with all of them. What is that? They will do what I... <laughs> oh my God. I love the way Jesus speaks. And like I've been telling those of us who are learning here, let's learn Jesus. I believe that's one thing that is missing in all our churches today. We know much about many things, less about Christ. And that is why we are less of Christ in our daily living. Because we do not even know him. Please give us that verse again. Let people see what Jesus is saying. All, not some. Not few. 
All who love me, we do what I do what what I say. You see, that's why I told us many years, many ago in some of my teachings, you don't measure churches, pastors, minister by ministry by what they are doing. Measure them by what Christ says. That's when you are going to get the truth and the fact. Are you following now? If Jesus says, when you give to those in need, do not broadcast it. And you see a whole ministry say, okay, we want to now help the poor today. Go and bring camera from everywhere. Put it on Facebook and Instagram. You should know that these ones are not doing what Christ says. Are you following me now? Jesus says, all, oh, all, oh, not some. All oh, who love me. He didn't say they will be singing praise and worship. <laughs> he didn't say even they will be preaching like me preaching. He said they will do what I say. That is, in every given situation or circumstance of life that they find themselves, they will only look for what Christ says and that is what they will do. If possible, if it will cost their life. Oh. Because a time came in the life of the apostles. They were threatening them. They wanted to kill them. They said, judge for yourself, you, our, our persecutors. Is it right for us to obey you or to obey God? We are going to do what Christ says. We are not going to do what you say. Hallelujah. And that is applicable to all. Now, what I'm why I, where I am is that I'm trying to tell us the meaning of those who fear God. That those who fear God is not something mystical or complicated. It simply means those who obey his commands. Those who follow the teachings of Christ. Those who follow the lives of Christ. Are you following now? Those who walk in the footsteps of Christ. Those are the ones that fears God. And I think I did a teaching for us here. Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Because if I'm not following Christ, please don't follow me. Hallelujah. So I'm trying to tell us the practical day-to-day -day meaning of fear, those who fear God. That it is not something mystical. It is not something spiritual somewhere. It is simply those who obey his commandment. Those who live according to his teaching. Those who do as Jesus says. Hallelujah. Now, can you give us that same John 14 and verse 15? Probably in the same translation you gave us verse 23. Look at it in verse 15 again. For the purpose of Bible knowledge. If you love me, the instruction was what? Obey my commandment. You see, that is the meaning of those who fear God. Those who obey his what? His commandment. Now, please get it right. I said, those who obey, who do what he says in every given situation of their lives, because there are no situations of our lives, let me be honest with you, that Christ is silent. We are the ones that are lazy to search for what he says. <laughs> if, we are, if we are interested in knowing what he says, in every given situation of our lives, we are going to see what he says. Amen. Amen. You know, I was talking with somebody some weeks or months ago and uh, he's a businessman a very successful businessman I give it to him according to at least Bible called that rich young man a rich young man <laughs> and um, he also is a Christian and he wanted to be talking about business and investment and I said huh, my brother I said Things like that doesn't fly on my table. I said, because if I'm to teach you <laughs> what Christ says about investment, you will not like it. <laughs> but if you can teach about what the economy says about investment, 
that one will be all right. He said, but Pastor, what? I said, listen. I said, you the businessman, you will tell us to invest where we are going to get the profit and stuff like that. But I said, for me as a pastor, I will tell you to invest where there will be no wrath or moat to steal it. <laughs> of course, that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, put your money where it will not be stolen. And you know what that means? He's not asking you to make your investment in the things of this world. And the brother looked at me and said, ah, well, he doesn't know that. I said, he's there, Matthew chapter 6, very open. But I said, because we are not reading Christ, little is known about that. So we only know, even in the church now, somebody standing, I want to teach you four steps to financial breakthrough, having different streams of income. Ah, I said, that is not for Christ. So if you want to learn that of Christ, you will run away from the church. Because you will say, I, I don't think I can do this one. You understand? Don't let me put you in, 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 in a coma. Look at what I'm saying here. Matthew chapter 6. I just want you to see it. It's not part of the teaching itself, but just for you to see it. <coughs> Look at what Jesus says here. Matthew chapter 6. Mm -hmm. And verse 19. He said, do not store up your... Matthew 6 and verse 19 and verse 20. 6, 19, 20, 21. Look at what Jesus says. He said, do not store up your treasures here on earth. We are moat eat them and rust destroy them. And we are thieves break in and do what? And steal. I don't need to overflow it. I, I, many people have lost their money in investment. <laughs> 2008, everything crashed. <laughs> so, you know, I don't need to overflow that. That's why Jesus said, don't put it where thieves will break in. It's not just the thieves like we have in Africa alone. When you have your investment in so, 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 Q company, when they said the company crashed, thieves don't carry the money. Go. <laughs> you understand? Now, go to verse 20 because that's not where we are. It says, store up your treasures in where? He didn't say in Swiss Bank. <laughs> so when I told the brother that one, <laughs> he said, what? Can you see? I said, that's why we don't teach that one of the business idea. This is the one I will teach you. Store up your treasures in heaven. Where moat and rust cannot destroy, and where tears do not break in and steal. Let's put that on our side. Let's continue with our teaching. Just to let you know what I'm saying, that until we are acquainted with Christ and his teachings, you understand me now, we may think that, oh, Jesus is silent on, on some things. There is nothing he's silent on. Oh. Hallelujah. So, what are we still saying before we push forward the teaching now? I'm saying that when we read in Psalm 1, 1 and verse 3, it says, I am a friend to those who, love, who fear God. Fear God there is not something mystical. It simply means obeying the commandment of God. And Jesus also make it plain for us. In John 14, uh, John 14, verse 15, and verse 23, that is the meaning of those who fear God. Praise the Lord. Now, when we are now talking about companions of the faithful, that is those who fear God, a friend of them. Now, before we move to the next point, I want you to get this clear again. The man that was saying this is not saying that he himself fear God. But he's saying, I am a companion of those who fear God. With the possibility that that virtue will do what? We rob on him. That's it. Now, let's now look at a few things that the New Testament says in giving us a commandment. Let's look at 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Sorry, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. I beg your pardon. 2 Timothy 2 verse 16. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 16. 2 Timothy 2, 16 says, Avoid worthless, foolish talk that only leads to more godless behavior. Avoid worthless, 
foolish talk that only leads to more godless behavior. Give us another translation before I interpret this. It says, give us another translation. Give us another translation before I interpret it. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 16. He said, avoid godless chatter because that's what I need. Those who indulge in it will become what? More and more ungodly. Companions of the faithful. This one is saying, if you don't avoid godless chatter, that is, if you acquaint yourself with things that are godless, people that are godless, materials that are godless, books that are godless, programs that are godless, don't think it will leave you the same way. It says it will only make you to be what? More and more ungodly. It's not going to leave you the same way. That's why I'm talking about companions of the faithful. Because when you are not, when you give yourself to any godless thing, in relationship, are you following now? In companionship, in associating with, it's not going to leave you the same way. It's going to make you to become more and more ungodly. Whereas, the man that we are using as a case study tonight already knew that I am ungodly. But if I am a friend to those who fear God, gradually, gradually, me too, I will start fearing God. I will start becoming godly. Do you understand now? So, that's why Apostle Paul was now saying here in 2 Timothy that avoid godless chatter. Avoid godless material. Avoid people that are godless. And that's why you know, I've said it clearly. Time with that number and I will not be tired. When you see them doing entertainment on the pulpit, just carry your Bible and go. Because it will never make you to be godly. Are you listening to me? It will never make you to be godly. Because somebody cannot be using godly material, Bible, to be ent for entertainment purpose. It's not. Could they work? Are you following now? So, he said, avoid them because they will make you to be ungodly. Now, let's look at the popular verse again. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33. This one also is very popular. Before I narrow the teaching down to us now. Companions of the faithful. Let's narrow it down. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33. He said, do not be misled. Don't be deceived. That's the meaning of do not be misled. By sweet words. By logical reasoning. <laughs> do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Are you listening to me? Don't be misled by your own figment of imagination that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> bad company, bad companions will corrupt even a good character. Even if a character is good, when he's in companionship with bad company, it will be corrupted. Now, what are we trying to say, Pastor? Very simple. Let's go back to that Psalm 119 and verse 63 so that we can come down to ourselves now. It says, I am a friend to all who fear God. Please note again, he is not saying, I am, I fear God. But he said, I am a friend to all who do what? Who fear God. And I said, the reason why he's saying that is because when he's in friendship or companionship with those who fear God, that virtue will rub on him or will rub on her. Let me tell us this, people of God. The companions, those who associate themselves with the faithful, cannot 
but end up being what? Being faithful. Those who associate themselves with materials that are godly, it's a matter of time. They too will attain the same godliness. Let me say this again. Those who associate themselves with godly things, it's a matter of times when they too will attain that godliness. What are we now saying to ourselves tonight? We are saying to ourselves that in the journey of life, let's be mindful and watchful of the company that we keep. Hear this again. Let's be watchful and be mindful of the company that we do what? That we keep. Let me tell you this as a pastor. I don't know if it is still existing, but when I was in Nigeria, I think around 2000 and two, between 2004 and 2008, there was an association that they gathered together. They called them Association of Successful Ministers of God. Ah! <laughs> My God. And what are the parameters for the so-called for qualification? You must be using a jeep. Then in that time, you your church should be like this or that. Uh, you must be ordained as a bishop and stuff like that. No, that's not the kind of comp. And there are men who say they want to be also in that kind of company. No, that's not the kind of companions that the Bible he said. I am a friend to those who fear God. Even if they belong to the lowest class in life, I would rather be friend with people like that. Do you get what we mean by companionship, Yana? As, as long as the person fears God, I don't care of his status in the society. That's the person I would love to be identified with. But you see, we are generations that we we are so much concerned about status. There even some people, they are so much concerned about status that it is the status that determines the kind of church that they go. I want to go to a church where my, my class, oh no, you are not going to church, you are going to a club. It's just as simple as that. It's just as simple as that. That's not a church, that's just a club. Are you following now? He says, I am a friend to those who fear God. I look for men and women. I look for young people that fear God and I want to be in their company. That's the meaning. I want to be in relationship with them. I want to be in their class. I want to listen to godly men. I want to listen to preachers that fear God. As a preacher, that's one thing I do. I don't just listen to every talk. The man, is does this man? If he fears God, tell me, my brother, I'm ready to listen to him 24/7. But if he does not fear God, no matter the level and the record of his success, I will be the last person to listen to what he's saying. Because listen, he says, "I am a friend to those who do what who fear God." So, in our journey of life, let's be mindful and be watchful of the kind of company that we find ourselves or that we are even interested of being a party to. And don't let us be carried away with the status of our generation. That may be okay for the people in the world, but let me be honest with you, it is not for those of us who are in Christ. Holy Spirit, give us understanding. Let's look at how the psalm is now concluded for us as I will release us with it. Psalm 1, very popular. Let's see the way he concluded it for us. Very popular. Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. You are going to see the way it's concluded for us. He said, Blessed is the man 
Blessed is the woman. Blessed is that boy or girl. Blessed is that pastor. Blessed is that member of the church. Who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked? The counsel of wicked men are those who do not fear God. In the sight of God, they are wicked, no matter the amount of their generosity. You listen to the teaching I did some Sundays ago. The, uh, the judge who gave just and Jesus called him unjust. Because as long as there is no God in your, in your permutation, even if you are doing something that is justice, God will consider you unjust. Do you get this now? As long as there is no God in your permutation, calculation to God, no matter the good things that you are doing, God consider it wickedness. So when we are, when we, in the language of the Bible, when he's talking about wicked, he's not talking of a murderer, he's not talking of thieves and armed robbers. Anyone, even that is doing something good without reference to God, God consider it wicked and insult. So when he says, Blessed is that man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. What he's saying is what we are learning now. He is not in the company of people like this. He is not in association, in friendship. He is not in closeness with people like this irrespective of what their status may be in life and in society. God, let me be honest with you. Many great men of every society are mockers of God. Hear me very carefully. <laughs> let no preacher deceive you. Many great men of every society are what? Mockers of God. Because people will respect them for their intelligence. Say, ah, don't you know him? Is professor so 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 and so professor of astronomical physics, <laughs> and yes, this is somebody who will be blaspheming God with all his tattoo teeth. But don't you know he's a Nobel laureate? <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say. So that's it. But he said that in the language of God, he said, "Blessed is the man." Who will not walk in the counsel of people like that because of their status? Let's go down. Verse 2. Very popular. Let's see what now says. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. His delight is in those who give attention to the precept, to the commandment, to the teaching of the Lord. That is what his delight is. Like that, someone will never say, I am a friend to those who fear God. That is his delight. That is what interests him. And because that is where his interest lies, you know the repercussion. Furthermore, on his law, he made it day and night, and so on and so forth. It's like a tree planted by the stream of water and so on and so forth. Whatever he does prospers and so on and so forth. But I didn't want to go down there this evening. But where I'm going so that I can pause a little bit is this. You can see that the companionship that someone was praising is not of those who are in companionship with those who are mockers, who are sinners and wicked. That's where I'm, what I'm saying. And if we too, we claim and profess to be following the Lord. Let me say this to us. God is concerned about our companions. He's not just concerned about us alone. He is concerned about our world companions. Or he is concerned about who and whom we associate ourselves with. Whom and whom we relate with. And like I'm saying, it is not just in terms of personality, even the kind of material that we are associating with. Because we are living in the age that uh, people may not even know the person that they are relating with except through reading their books and materials. And yet, the same person will be their mentor, even though they have not seen him for once in life. There is nothing wrong with that. 
most of the people that God has made to be my teachers, fathers, and mentors, I've never met them. A.W. Toza died before they born me. But his books are always around me. <laughs> any time, any day. Are you following me now? As a man of God who has been a father to me, I, didn't, I never knew him. He died in 1982. I was not even born again that time. But his books are always in my company. Anywhere I see his book in bookshop, I will buy it. That's what means that the company you keep, the companions. Are you following me now? Because when you keep company with those who fear God, it's a matter of time. The fear of God will resonate in your heart too. If you don't get anything tonight, let me tell you that clearly. That one of the principal steps to fear God, to be godly, and to live a life that will please God is to look for men and women, old and young, who are doing that and follow them. It's a matter of time. It will rub on you. Many years ago, when I first started reading books of A.W. Tuza, very young in the faith and in the ministry, many that were colleagues used to ask me, are you as old as that? I said, no, I'm not an old person. I'm not even an old in person in the faith. But the kind of the books I have read always make me speak above my age and my experience even in the Christian faith. Hallelujah. So what am I trying to say so that we can go tonight? Let's go back to that Psalm 119 and verse 63 where the text, where the topic is taken from. Shall we rise up those of us in the house? Psalm 119 verse 63. I am a friend to all who fear God. I am what? A friend to all who fear God. Brothers and sisters, online and on ground, for you and for me to live such kind of life that is pleasing to God, we need to check our companions. Most importantly, the kind of people that we are interested to be identified with. Permit me to say to you again, in the journey of Christian faith, status of men is not an important thing that call for association. Status of men is not important that call for association. What call for association in the journey of Christian faith is a virtue that each person carries. And one of the principal virtues we are talking of tonight is the fear of God. Brothers and sisters, I put it to you again tonight. If you are privileged to see a man, a woman, a boy or a girl that fears God, walk closer to him or her. If you are privileged to come in contact with books that talks about the fear of God, even if they are selling the $1,000, buy that one. Is all these seven principles to success, seven principles to those who won't actually help your faith. They will not help you to become the kind of person God wants you to be. They can help you to become the kind of person the world wants you to be. But they are two different things. The kind of person God wants you to be is not the same kind of person the world wants you to be. Let me say that as I close, so that you get what I'm saying. Satan told Adam and Eve, if you eat this fruit, you too you will become like God. Can you see? What God wants them to be is different from what Satan wants them to, to be. But everything boils on, just consume this thing. And when they consume it, they became what Satan wants them to do what? To be. I don't know if you get that. They didn't become what God wanted them to be by eating what Satan offered them. The same thing. If we are not eating the genuine word of God, you can become what the world wants you to be, but not what God wants you to be. 
May God give us understanding. I want us to close our eyes as we pray. <laughs> the companions of the faithful. Online and on ground, you are under the sound of my voice. I want you to make a pledge to God, not to me tonight. Everything ungodly I'm associating with. Lord, tonight I'm ready to break loose. Lord, I'm ready to cut them off. Is there anything ungodly I am in companionship with? Maybe there is a material that you are in companionship with and it's ungodly. You can say, Lord, I'm going to cut them off tonight. I will cut them off tonight. I will cut them off tonight. I will cut them off tonight. Just talk to God. <laughs> I will cut them off tonight. Maybe even there are people, human beings, that are ungodly, that you are in company with. We are not saying hate them. No, Jesus didn't ask us to hate but he asked us not to be unequally yoked with them. You can cut it off. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Walk in us here, online and on ground. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Spirit of the living God, your word is cast again like a seed onto the ground. I pray for your people online and on ground that you will quicken this truth in our hearts. As many of us that need to cut off from anything, anyone, and everything that is ungodly. I pray that grace to do so will be given to us. I pray for the desire, interest, and the love to walk with men that fears you. To keep in company with those who fear you. Lord, may we be baptized with that afresh. And may we also be in that company of them that fear you. That others may walk with us also. Thank you, King of Glory. As we go tonight, go with us. Let your presence saturate us. Wednesday will be gathering for meeting on Saturday for the month come prayer hour. Open the heavens over us. Show yourself strong in our midst. Break yokes and do wonders. And when we shall be gathered on Sunday for the special Sunday of encounter, when we shall be having your servant all the way from Nigeria ministering, I pray, O oh Lord God, in a greater dimension, you will walk in this place. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Before we share the grace, those who are listening to us online, I want to encourage you, this Saturday and Sunday is a moment of encounter in this church. Saturday, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. is our Mount Campbell prayer meeting. That's second Saturday of every month. I want to encourage you Leave the comfort of your home. Let's come together to call upon God. Hallelujah. And on Sunday, we are going to be having a special Sunday of encounters. To God be the glory, we are having a guest minister all the way from Nigeria. Reverend Sam Aji Tomambi will be ministering to us on this Monday. Please, I want you to encourage, invite your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues. Uh, I believe that this once upon a time a moment god will make it memorable in our lives together in the name of jesus the service starts 9 30 a.m on sunday the lord bless you as you come in jesus name let's share the grace in fellowship may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen you are blessed in jesus name